So guys, now we have our Spring Batch application, which works just as we want. We use uh, multi-thread steps and multi-thread, all right, in order to achieve a uh, performance and, and we got this result. But uh, it's not enough uh, in some scenarios. For example, let's suppose that here on our sales info item processor, we are going to uh, maybe enrich this item, ever item, okay, with uh, like, I don't know, with a data uh, from an external API. Or maybe we are going to make some very uh, long uh, calculation uh, on our item processor. And maybe uh, this, uh, this uh, calculation gonna take us some time let's suppose like 2000 uh, milliseconds okay so um we are going to lose once again uh, the performance okay but it's not uh, so so sad as you can see because um spring batch offers us an uh, another approach which is async item processing so what is it async item processor an async item processor is a technique which allows us to process each item on a different thread once the process uh, processing of this item uh, has been completed um, we are going to return a future okay so the async item writer gonna receive this future and persist or, or just do uh, whatever you want to do okay so for those who knows uh, and understand the concept of future and completable future it's already clear okay but uh, what exactly we are going to achieve is uh, once again the performance because uh, on our item processing or item processor we can do long uh, uh, live long uh, calculations so uh, in order to avoid the loss of uh, um, performance we are going to use async uh, item processing so async item processor is a class just like uh, item processor it receives an input and returns an out output so this class uh, can be found on the spring batch integration okay so let's go uh, to our code in order to understand the, the concept as we can see uh, the async item processor is not default from uh, we, we cannot get this class uh, just using spring batch so we need to add on our project um, another dependency which is spring batch integration okay it's just a mix uh, of uh, spring integration and spring batch framework as always you can find the dependency on my uh, maven uh, repository okay so i have already on my project so let's jump to our implementation so now we are here uh, on our sales info job config and let's just create uh, first our um, async uh, item processor okay which gonna receive as always sales info DTO because um, on our uh, step the input is sales info DTO and the output is sales info not on our step but uh, on our processor if you remember we can just uh, jump uh, here on our processor and we can see that we are receiving a um, sales info and sales info DTO and returning a sales info okay so let's keep uh, this uh, thread sleep for 2000 okay uh, because we we want to simulate um, maybe a uh, long calculation or we are hitting an external API okay uh, so let's just uh, comment here so um, let's jump back to our um, job config so here on our job config we keep uh, doing so the output gonna be sales info and let's just call it uh, by async item processor now let's instantiate it oh 
Oops. So maybe uh, let's leave it like that. And yeah, let's let's just put it explicit incognito. So now um, let's delegate um, our item processor because uh, when we when we use uh, a sync item processor, we we have to delegate our item processor which we 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 created already. Okay, so we are going to delegate it. Um, let's see how we call it. Sales info item processor. Sales info item processor. And then we are going to set a task executor. Okay. So we are going to set for our async item um, item processor a task executor. So we have already a task executor here. But if we jump a little bit, let's just go uh, here on a sync item processor, we can see the implementation. It's using a, a sync uh, task executor. So we are uh, like uh, using our task executor. You can just read the documentation, okay? As always, I'm not, um, I'm not your, your, your father, I'm your sensei. So just keep reading the documentation and you are going to understand the concept behind a sync item processor. Uh, so let's jump back to our con configuration. So now we are going to return uh, our async item processor. So that's good. Let's set it as a bin. That's good. In, in that order, we have already our um, async item processor. But going back here on our image, we can see that uh, after reading uh, a, a item we are going to process uh, this item uh, in, in uh, a sync manner okay in a sync way so uh, this async gonna return as a future okay this future gonna be uh, uh, like uh, consumed uh, I can say like just that uh, consumed uh, uh, in our async item uh, writer so Let's uh, let's jump to let's implement our async item writer, okay? So let's just write public sync item writer. So what our item writer is receiving, as we can see, our async item processor receive an uh, sales info DTO and returning uh, sales info. So this is the same concept. Or even we can just look at our item uh, in JPA item writer. It's returning item uh, uh, sales info um, class. So sales info async item writer. So here um, let's also async uh, writer is equal to. So now that we have this, um, now we are going to delegate also our item writer. Okay, so our item writer is a sales info item writer. Sales info item writer. So now we return a sync item writer. Let's set it as a bin. So voila, we have it. Um, now that we have uh, decorated our uh, item processor and our um, item writer, we can now use them in our step. Okay. So uh, as I said, okay, here we are returning a future. Okay. So once the async item processor process 
it's gonna return uh, a future. You can just uh, go back here on the documentation, okay? It's saying, okay? It's saying that uh, it's gonna return uh, for us a future, as we can see here, okay? Once we perform, it's gonna return us a, a future. So this is what we are going to, to do. It's going to affect our step. So in that order here, instead of uh, writing in uh, sales info, we are going to write a future, okay, sales info. So in that order, as we can see here, already it's uh, like uh, um, complaining, the IntelliJ is complaining. So we just need to remove this one and remove this one. What we are going to, to, to use here, we are going to use our async item processor instead of our, uh, our item processor. So async item processor, and here we are going to use async item writer. So that's all that we need to do. In order to create an async processor, we just need to write an async item processor, which return as a future we know, and then write uh, and, and create another uh, async item writer and delegate them. Okay, so uh, let's. Uh, so before testing our application, before running our application, we just need to uh, add here another property, which gonna be uh, the rejected execution handler for um, task executed in this case. Okay. So once we have increased the number of threads, maybe we we want to increase also. Uh, the chunk uh, the chunk size because it's too small 10 is not enough let's put it 100 okay and let's see uh, what we can get um, having this bottleneck here okay let's run our application and test it 